My guest at this time was formerly known as NXT superstar Tyler Russ, but now he's out there. He's a free agent. It is Taylor Russ. Taylor, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Yeah, thanks for having me on here, Nick. I appreciate it, man. Well, I mean, I think I'm about as surprised to talk to you as everybody else is that I'm talking to you right now, man. I mean, this had to catch you uh, out of left field, I would imagine. I mean, TV debut, you're part of this new stable. Like, were you taken off guard by, uh, by your release? I guess we'll start there. I mean, yeah, I would say I've talked to a good few people that also kind of got the news that day. And even the guys that got the cleanup round beforehand, I'm pretty sure all of us kind of felt like it was a bit of a shock when it happened. So, I mean, I was out of town actually in like Myrtle Beach, my brother at the time, just had like a little getaway for the weekend. And... Yeah, you got the phone call, and I was just kind of like sat there for a minute on the beach, just thinking about it, like, okay, like this is going to change life for a while. But I mean, it's not the end of a road, it's just a turn of a road. So it's been a good long run while I had it, man. I mean, I was there for a good solid year from, and they, they used me really well the entire time. They never once parried me. They always made me look well. I had a great experience, honestly, with every single person I worked with, all the coaches, agents, like, wrestlers man it was a great experience honestly for me like it made me look good used well everybody's awesome to work with so nxt is a really good spot yeah you know uh i guess i'll bounce around here a little bit from what my the plan i had here because like you talk about how you had a you had a good run there for for a year which is true they used you well but man i was looking at your i was doing some research dude you've been working on and off with wwe since what like 2008 or something like that yeah yeah, when you're, like, doing the independence and they come to town, you know, you're just trying to do anything you can to get noticed. And, I mean, when I first started doing it, I had, like, nothing going on. And then I started working with, like, PWG and stuff. And so I didn't really need to do it, to do extra work as much anymore. But they would still hit us up when they came to the West Coast to do, like, commercials for them or to, like, fill in to do, hey, we need someone to do a match on the ECW show I did once. So, you know, those times you still do it. But, yeah, I've been off and on with them. Um, I had like my first real trial experience with them in like 2012, actually. It went really well. Uh, I thought I was going to get signed then, but at the time they weren't really looking for indie guys as much, you know, like I was there, Tim Thatcher was there. It was the, the same camp that, uh, Bailey got picked up out of. She was just working on the indies at the time. So realistically out of that whole camp they only, only signed three people two of them were just pro athletes and one of them was bailey it's a pretty good mix i guess right? yeah <laughs> you know worked out well for her <laughs> well, I guess the kind of thing is like unlike a lot of people in your class you know were you know some people uh really all they knew was nxt right like this was their first time around or were people that really didn't know pro wrestling like you have some perspective on it. Like ha having been at NXT and kind of seen what WWE was like years ago. I mean, were you heartened by that? Did you, I mean, did you feel the company was moving in a more positive direction, I guess, from where you'd seen it in years prior? Or I don't know. I don't know how you felt. Yeah, I think we all have that feeling that when uh, Triple H took over that brand and he kind of made it his own and what he wanted it to be, which wasn't just a development system. He wanted to showcase, you know, what WWE was kind of missing and what the independent scene was really gaining steam with and why it was becoming this ball of fire that everybody was able to make a living out wrestling all of a sudden. I mean, I remember when I first started wrestling in like 2004 and for a good few years after, like living off of wrestling was a dream to anybody unless you were signed to the big guys. I remember I even met Billy Kidman once at this uh, big NWA show we did. And I said, hey, man, do you have any advice, that whole stuff? And he said, Wrestling is in a very weird spot right now where it's in a transition period and there's really nothing for anybody at the moment. And I was like, that's a really depressing thing to say, but <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't wrong. Jesus. And it took a minute, but wrestling got going at that transition period and it hit that boom. And all of a sudden it became this graceland for guys to actually, you know, make a living for themselves again. Uh, without having to go to WWE. And I think they realized that. And that's when they said we need to captivate this and you know, encapsulate it here in our product. That's what NXT became, you know. NXT became that capsulation of what the independent work really was, the wrestling, the harnessing of it. Yeah, for sure. Did you uh, did you get to spend uh, much, if any, time talking to Triple H or working with him when you were down there? Yeah, I worked with him and uh, Sean a lot, hand-in-hand, hand, actually. Um, they were both very 
integrated into the diamond mine. They uh, both very invested in what we were doing with it. It was a lot of their idea actually was having this group together. These guys that are very, you know, uh, realistic type wrestlers, guys that can actually have really solid matches, but are known, not just can, but are kind of known for being like wrestler, wrestler kind of guys like me and Roderick Strong and Hideki Suzuki, who's now Hachiman. Like, that's what they wanted all along for this. They've been playing this since I first got there. And when me and uh, Bibbin started, that was kind of always the idea was we were going to go that direction. Dude, that's all. Yeah, because like Hunter really seems to be kind of more into that blood sport vein right now with the fight pit going on. And, and, and that's why I was not I was not surprised to see a group like this. Like it seemed very much of the cut of cloth that he wants at the moment for his style down there, you know, from what I can see, at least. So now he wants if you watch it. NXT, for example, is always it's I always say it's like the heavy metal version of WWE because it's like very black, it's dark. Look at the logo. The logo has like the skulls with, the, with like the wings on it and everything. It's very much so uh, like a, the darker, edgier version of a WWE product. And it goes along that with the same with the wrestling. Like, oh, it's not just we're going to go out there and talk. No, they want hard matches. They want hard hitting matches. They want realism. You know, they want things that are really going to be different from what you're seeing on Raw and SmackDown. That's what it's always been kind of producing. And that's what's made it stand out so much on its own. And I love being a part of that product. Yeah, man. And like, you know, putting the diamond mine together, you talk about how invested they were. Um, there were those reports that uh, who has now um, and Marina Shafir were supposed to be a part of the group. Did you feel like something was up when it like kind of at the last second it was decided they were not going to be a part of the group when it debuted on TV or, or did you just think it was business as usual? No, it was, that was a complete shock again. Same thing as when I kind of got my call. I remember uh, talking with Marina and Ruas like the very next day, actually afterwards. And I was just like, what's going on? You know, like you guys were supposed to be with us. We had filmed some things together. So, you know, they, they were, they're both very, very talented, you know, what they, in their background skills. And while they were still like uh, a little green on the wrestling side, like they had learned it so well. And Marina was going to be so badass in the ring. I was training with her a good bit and, I was like, man, she is going to be a badass girl when she starts doing these matches. Like, she was ready to do something killer in that ring. So it really, really sucks that they kind of, like, she got let go for now. And who knows? Life is long. Maybe she ends up coming back in a year. Maybe Ross does. Maybe, you know, it doesn't happen. It's a lot of different roads we all go on. But I really hope that she, she, she can showcase, like, how badass she was becoming because, like, I was training with her a good bit. And, man, she's a killer. She's definitely yeah. a killer. Well, and like you were part of like, I don't know, like the third or fourth, fifth, it's hard to say at this point, like wave, like they've kind of come in waves recently. Like what, would, like you see that happen with Diamond Mind stuff. You see other people like going away. What was the, what was the morale and kind of vibe like at NXT? What is it like there right now? Are people walking on eggshells? Or like what, what, what's the feeling when something like this is going on? Uh, it's, you know, I don't want to speak for how it is now. I mean, I, I talk to people that are still there. You know, they tell me like their feelings and their thoughts. And while it's their perspective of everything, it's their perspective. So I don't want to speak on like how it is kind of now that, but even before, once the cleanup round started happening, you know, like, it was very odd because usually the WWE would do like, yeah, they do their firings, like spring cleaning, everyone calls it, right? Right. But then they've done a few of those rounds since then. And it was just odd that they were releasing more and more. And we kept hearing like random reasons why. And, you know, I mean, you figure as long as you're, as long as you're part of the product in some useful way, as long as you're being used in a storyline, you're good. But then when I saw Alistair Black, and when I saw Buddy Murphy get released, I was like, man, nobody is good. Like these guys were solid players that had a lot to offer here. And you know, I mean, it wasn't really walking on. foot. I think everybody just kind of embraced it. It is what it is. One day we're all going to have our time, and when that comes, it comes. No big deal. Um, there was that report that Vince went down to the the PC and looked at a lot of NXT and Performance Center talent. Were you one of the people that was there when Vince was there looking at talent down at the Performance Center? Yeah, I think most of us that were like uh, there at the thing were we were all kind of there. It, it happened a few times, actually. 
you know, they come in, they look at, they, he didn't really uh, come in like it looked too long. I want to say he was only there for like 10 minutes or so realistically. He had a lot of like uh, the people that work with him, you know, very hand in hand. Like um, they were more like there with like a little binders, like channels, like looking at everybody. Okay. I gotcha. So wait, not that Vince is there regularly, but his people are there pretty regularly. And then I guess there was this one day where Vince came by for like 10 minutes or something to, to look at everybody just to make sure I'm getting that right or no. Yeah, basically, I wouldn't say that like, you know his team is there regularly. It was just like when the date, like the two times I think he came by, like they were there with they were there, but his team was kind of there all day. He was I didn't I didn't at least see him honestly for more than like ten minutes. Is it more stressful when you know Vince is in the house like watching you, or do you get like a surge of adrenaline knowing that the boss is in the room? I embrace it, man. Like. This is what we're here for. We're here to perform. We're here to show how good we can be. I want every opportunity to do that. You know what I mean? If you want to have the big guy come down and watch us train, like, I'll do it. Like, I embrace that side, you know? This is how you're going to get ahead. This is how you're going to prove you are worth something. All these years of experience I've harnessed under myself. If I'm nervous about showcasing it, I'm doing a pretty bad job, I think. Yeah. All right. And one more thing about NXT, because, like, we talked about the Diamond Mine stuff, but I really love the Thatch is Thatch Can segments. I just thought they were... Oh yeah, cool. right. And like you got to be a part of those and actually kind of shine a bit in that. What was it like to work with with Thatcher and be a part of those uh, vignettes there? Uh, me and Thatcher go back a long ways. We've known each other from our early days in California scene. You know, when he was just starting and I was kind of getting my ground going. So we've always done like our careers have always gone different ways and come back together and then split and then back. You know, we met up again in Germany doing the time over there together a little bit. And then he left with WWE. I went back and did more Germany. And I was basically filling like the shoes that he wasn't there anymore, the American catch guy. And then I go to WWE now with him. And my first time going to NXT there for that batch segment, me and Henry were ready to walk out. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, you know, telling him, man, it's funny. Like, our careers always seem intertwined in some way. Like, we're always like, We'll go in and out. We're always around each other, but like we always come back. And so, you know, he's a good friend. Uh, and I just told him, like, if there's any way for me to kind of start this journey here in WWE, I'm really glad it's with you, brother, because like he's a good guy. Um, well, it's an exciting time, uh, Taylor, uh, for you to be in the position you're at. You've been, you know, all over. You've got some TV time now. Now, before you got to WWE, you had also kind of been working a bit with New Japan, a little with Ring of Honor as well. Uh, how does it feel right now to kind of be back on the market? What, what does it feel like kind of for you in this moment? Uh, it still feels kind of surreal, actually. I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, uh, post-WWE life was something I never really thought about. Like, when I first started wrestling, man, my goal was I was told it was like a million to one shot to ever get signed to WWE. And that's really this time. And I was just like, yeah, you know, I was 16, 17 when I first started. So I was just very stubborn and like, I can do it. I can do it. I'm going to do it. And I mean, you know, hey, I did it. It took me a while and I'm not afraid of that. I'm not ashamed of that. It did. But it happened. And now being on the post side of all that, like the post WWE life, where it goes, you know, we'll see. Uh, there's a lot of good offers out there right now, man. And I can tell you there's some good things coming. Um, you know, just keep, keep watching that, but, uh, I'm excited for it. You know, I'm excited to see how these chips kind of fall, especially the wrestling in general. There's such a vast world going on right now with it for anybody of value to kind of go out there and have this life and career with it. So I'm really excited to kind of have this more to offer now outside of just being a really good wrestler. Now it's, you know, having the wrestling ability and having the name from WWE. And I think the two combined, I can really make some good waves now. Yeah. I think, for it. yeah like I bring up the New Japan Ring of Honor stuff, you know, uh, briefly, I think it was like maybe one, maybe two matches. The, the pure wrestling tournament uh, got to dabble in those waters. What do you think of like the work Gresham has done uh, with Ring of Honor and the pure division? Because obviously with, you know, you've been Team Filthy, Diamond Mine, like it seems like that would be a, a vertical that you you would be very comfortable in over there. Uh, Gresham is amazing in the, in the ring. Like the work he's been doing with the pure title, that one the tournament where I did it with this the one round match. 
I was very happy to be a part of it because I, you know, grew up watching all those matches, just studying them when Nigel was like having the, the belt and everything when it was first going on. And being able to be in there and just be a part of that for a little bit was really, really awesome feeling. Kind of felt very full circle to me. And uh, with Gresham being the champ, man, like he's he's a dominant man in that ring, I can tell you. And yeah, I, I, I would love to be able to now have the chance to kind of wrestle with him and maybe even for that belt, the pure title. I think, uh, I think I'm a pretty good pure wrestler. So. Okay. I, yeah, I, I'd say so. Again, considering the pedigree <laughs> off there. And then with New Japan, real interesting time. Yeah, over at, at New Japan, because like they were, uh, you know, just getting going really with the North American expansion. You were part of like this, like secret tapings, I believe, or whatever like that. Um, like with over at New Japan, like what, it, what, what was it like to be part of kind of this experiment that they were having and, and you know, uh, with their North American expansion and, and what they're doing? It was really awesome because it was in the middle of uh, like the COVID shutdowns. And so everybody was kind of like, you know, what are we doing as far as wrestling goes? What are we going to do for like, as far as work? And I remember Rocky Romero said, hey, man, like, keep it quiet because we're not trying to make a big deal out of it. But we're going to still we're gonna do some New Japan stuff. And, you know, we want to use you. Okay, I just came back from Germany, actually, doing my, my uh, Germany tour where I was over there for like a good three months. And so I was last thing I wanted to do was... This is all before the movie. So the last thing I wanted to do was let, let any bit of that name cool because I'd been pushing it hard to kind of get myself built up. And I felt I finally really had a lot of steam going, a lot of value going. You know, I did a couple of things over in uh, England. I did the Germany tour. I was, you know, like coming back to the States. I had a lot planned, but soon I came back uh, from the tour and all of a sudden COVID happened and it all kind of stopped and it kind of fell away. And I was like, well, there goes that. Uh, but then Rocky Romero hitting me up to do the New, New Japan stuff. That was basically like, okay, it's not done. It's going to keep going. This is exactly what, what, I, what I was looking for, what I needed. Because, I mean, it's New Japan for wrestling, man. This is like top of the line. You know, this is one of the biggest companies in the entire world in general. So those tapings we did, they were, it was great to be back in the ring and be in a New Japan ring like that. I've done a little bit of stuff with them before, but nothing like I would say too routinely or major. And this was finally like, hey, this is it. And it was going really well. I loved working with Tom Lawler as I was. You know, our team Filthy thing we did originally it was really cool. I remember when I got the news from WWE, I actually had to call Rocky Romero and tell him, hey, our next set of tapings we do for New Japan, uh, it's going to have to be my last one. I'm sorry. And he was like, oh, man, are you quitting wrestling? What's going on? Like, why are you quitting? I'm like, no, 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 I'm not quitting, I'm not quitting. I'm doing better things. Uh, I told him I was getting signed. And Rocky also was a guy that helped train me early on in my career. He helped uh, teach me how to wrestle a lot. You know, I spent a lot of nights training in the ring with him and T.J. Perkins, you know, uh, just learning this mat wrestling style from the uh, New Japan Dojo that they learned. They were passing a lot of it on to me and we spent a lot of nights for a couple of years, like, doing this. And so... I've always looked to Rocky as kind of like a trainer, you know, like a very experienced, you know, person that always taught me throughout the years in the business. So telling him that, that, hey, man, being one of the first people I told that, hey, like, this stuff is great. I love working with you guys, but I have something I got to go do. And him being very proud of me in that moment, like, it was kind of a cool feeling. Dude, that's awesome. I mean, I think before Tony Khan opened the Forbidden Door, I think Rocky had already kind of run. He was running back and forth through it. I mean, he goes... He does everything, you know, um, and on, on that kind of note, I mean, it's it's got to be nice. You know, again, you, it sounds like you left on these good terms with these promotions that are all kind of seemingly a lot of them harmoniously kind of playing together right now. I mean, that's got to be heartening for you, knowing that it's not like you have to just kind of attach your horse to one wagon, so to speak, right now. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, even if you do attach your horse to one wagon, they're all open realistically to letting you go and work with the other, it seems, you know, you see a lot of uh, promotional integration and that's really awesome to kind of see that community and that, that connection happening in within the wrestling world right now. Um, I think it's still, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really, really, uh, I'm really open-minded for what's going to happen coming next. I got a lot of good offers for it. So being a part of that integration, that could be really cool. But, you know, I mean, life has a lot of turns, man. We'll see what road ends up going down it for me. 
Well, and I guess I'll ask you the last one here that you don't really have any ties with at least yet or in the future. I don't really know. But what do you think of what AEW is doing? I mean, obviously, this is a very, very buzzy week for them. Looks like CM Punk could be joining the company on Friday. Daniel Bryan not far behind. Like, what do you think of the product that AEW is presenting right now? I think they're doing amazing stuff. I think a wrestling needs a second, you know, competition to WWE in the States because competition breeds improvement. You know, and without having someone there having to make sure they're ahead against, like, even if they don't view them as, even if they want to say they don't view them as competition, like, they still have to make sure they're ahead of them. They still have to make sure that they're not falling behind. And that's going to make them be better. And that's going to also make AEW push to be more every time. You know, they just started their second show right now, well, last Friday night. And things like that are going to just make the wrestling world in general for everybody involved, even if they're not in the two companies, like have more opportunities because it's just going to keep this boom going. So I think AEW is doing a fantastic thing and I hope for nothing but them to grow and give more job offers to people in this industry that are really deserving of it. Cause it's amazing seeing your buddies out there making money. There's, there was this report that came out like uh, less than a week ago. Um, I didn't know what you thought of it, but like that Vince was like upset with, Triple H and like the NXT product for like losing to AEW and that's what's causing a lot of like turmoil and stuff. When you hear what what do you think of reports like that when you see those things? Um honestly I would think they're just speculational personally because the vibe around NXT has always been very good. It's always been very, you know, controlled within the working and I don't think we really had to feel like, well, like when we did move to Tuesday, for example, it was made very clear that hey, this is this is a total network thing. This doesn't have anything to do with you know us on the Wednesday night deal. This is just to do with USA wants to move us over. They wanted to promote uh, hockey more on a Wednesday night, is what it was. Okay. So and I love hockey, so I was all about it, man. I'm like, hey, let's let's promote the NHL. Everybody needs to watch more NHL. Personally, I'm all down for it. So, but yeah. no, I mean. I mean, I know there's a lot of rumors now about as far as like Vince uh, wanting to overhaul the NXT product and everything. And I mean, sometimes maybe rumors are rumors, times maybe they're right. You know, we'll see how it is going forward from there. But from my experience there, man, there wasn't really many eggshells as far as like upper manager not being happy. Everything they saw whenever they came to the performance center and they saw us training, they absolutely loved it. I remember hearing exact words were always uh like this is amazing this is everything that we we want to invest in like how much they were proud of all the hard work we were doing there at the performance center and they see the way we train the way that we were they see how hard we really really work on this product and it was always such positive feedback from everybody upstairs honestly all right. Well, hey, Taylor, I want to thank you so much uh, for taking the time to chat with me. Um, where can people go right now to find you, follow you, support you, all those wonderful things? I mean, mostly Twitter and Instagram, brother. You know, at underscore Taylor Russ. That's kind of what I have with them. Yeah, there it is. I appreciate it. Yeah, they're right there on the little. That, <laughs> hey, that guy. Yeah, that yeah. guy. 